I've been around the community for a really long time at this point, and I have seen projects come and go that attempt to do this thing. Try and make the Half-Life 2 beta a full playable game. It's something that dozens and dozens of teams have tried to do and fail. I have been a fan of the Half-Life 2 beta since I first discovered it back in like, what, 2009? And I have seen countless mods come and go and just see the team disband before anything major is playable. That is until lately. We've seen two major mods actually have some sizable releases. Dark Interval and the one we're talking about today, Raising the Bar Redux. <laughs> This video is sponsored by War Thunder. Experience the unparalleled depth of vehicle warfare with War Thunder, now available for free on both PC and consoles. Commandeer a vast arsenal of more than 2,500 vehicles, including tanks, aircrafts, helicopters, and naval ships from 10 leading nations. Your journey begins with early 20th century biplanes and armored cars and escalate to the cutting edge fighter jets and main battle tanks of the modern era. Dive into the heart of battle with War Thunder, where the vehicles are meticulously detailed, the graphics are strikingly realistic, and the sound effects authentically recreate the atmosphere of war. You'll feel as if you're directly in control of history's most formidable war machines. Become part of a global community with over 70 million players, engaging in massive PvP battles. Explore War Thunder's vast, high-quality content and join the gathering for military history enthusiasts. There's no other game that offers such an extensive and immersive experience. Why? Because my grandfather, my great pop-pop, the person who introduced me to video games and computers, flew one in World War II, and now I'm flying one for you, pop -Pop. New War Thunder players across all platforms, as well as those that haven't played for at least six months, can claim a large bonus pack by using my link. This pack includes multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, an exclusive 3D decoration for all vehicles, and much more. And again, it's a limited time. And thank you very much, War Thunder, for sponsoring this video. Let's get right back to it. RTBR has been in development since 2018, trying to pick up where the previous and canceled Raising the Bar mod left off. And although the game has been in development for six years, the majority of the stuff that is in the fully playable build nowadays is only a few years old, and I'm happy to say is now my favorite mod ever. This is my favorite Half-Life 2 mod I have ever played, and it's not done yet. But what is here is very much worth the time of anybody who is even remotely interested in the Half-Life 2 beta. Raising the Bar Redux is releasing episodically. They call it Divisions, and as of now, two are out. Division 1 covers the opening of the game, what you'd come to expect, you know, terminal plaza, industrial sector, child labor. Division 2 covers all the way up to the end and escape of Ravenholm. It's quite sizable. My gameplay lasted five hours and I enjoyed all of it. And this is only two of the planned seven parts. That's right, seven parts that the developers are planning. Now, I'm gonna be real. I don't believe that this team is capable of lasting long enough to be able to release all seven of these parts, plus the announced Portal spinoff that is attempting to recreate and revitalize the Combine Nova Prospect 2005 era of Portal's development all at the same time, while also taking into consideration that a few people from this development team are also helping helping and co-directing the Half-Life 2 RTX project that we talked about last week. That is a lot of stuff. That's a lot of modded content to be worked on and expected to release. I have a rule to not talk about content that isn't out yet because I've had so many mod teams feed me a line of what is effectively crap and then cancel, getting a bunch of attention in the process. But what is already playable up until Division 2 is amazing. Everything is already outlined and planned. There have been anniversary posts on the ModDB page made that details some of the blockouts and concept art for all seven divisions. There's a lot of work completed on all of it, according to these blog posts on ModDB. They even already released a spin-off mod called Raising the Bar Salvation that sees Father Grigori try to escape Ravenholm, and it's great. The vibes are immaculate. This is the closest that I have seen to the actual vibes of trying to play through some of the WC map pack maps as a young kid, all enamored and engrossed in the ideas that my brain could come up with trying to fill in the gaps of these sporadic empty maps. That isn't to say it's 
perfect. This is, of course, kind of a review of the mod as it currently stands, but it does deserve mention that I played the mod when it first came out, when Division 1 first launched back a few years ago, and I didn't like it. I thought the level design was clunky and cluttered, difficult to navigate, difficult to read, and I thought the combat was lackluster. In the interim, not only have they released Division 2, they have redone most of Division 1, and again, now, it's my favorite Half-Life 2 mod I have ever played. It's not perfect. Some of the voice acting is bad. That said, the people doing Grigori, Eli, and Alex are killing it. They are doing such a good job. In fact, this mod goes so far as to not emulate Merle Dandridge, the original voice actor for Alex Vance. Instead, the actors that they've picked are emulating the very few snippets of the original voice actors for Alex and Eli. That attention to detail is absurd. There are two parts that sold me on this game. Raising the Bar Redux's version of the Manhack Arcade and Eli Maxwell's Den. The combat loop that this mod has created is better than Half-Life 2's. They are trying to emulate some of the ideas that Valve was attempting to do with Half-Life 2, but refine them and replace certain aspects of them that were found annoying or clunky. So for example, we're not dealing with universal ammo. For those that are unaware, Half-Life 2 was originally going to have just three types of ammo, light, medium, and heavy, that would be shared across all the weapons. What Raising the Bar Redux is doing is replacing the weapon set multiple times throughout the game in order to better reflect the environments that Gordon is in. That's why in the beta you have multiple versions of a crowbar replacement such as the ice pick and multiple SMG replacements such as the OICW or the AK-47. The Manhack Arcade, which doesn't attempt to emulate any kind of playable arcade machine where you control manhacks, is instead a massive arena that plays flawlessly, mixed in with an ambient soundtrack that tries to emulate that dark, gritty, oppressive atmosphere of the original beta. Oh my god. And then you get to Eli's Den, and this section deserved to be three times as long. It is attempting to echo some of the things about Black Mesa East when you first meet Eli Vance in Retail Half-Life 2, get some story, get the gravity gun, combine attack, you escape to Ravenholm. That still kind of happens, except nowadays it's Eli Maxwell and Alex Vance hanging out in a junkyard of sorts built into a cave. And instead of dog, Alex is walking around with Skitch a tamed alien that really was only seen in a few pieces of concept art that Raising the Bar Redux just perfectly encapsulated with sound effects and animations and model design. Incredible. But my favorite part is when you're talking to Eli, a bunch of items in his den become highlighted and you can walk over to different ones and press your use key and have Eli Maxwell give you story about those different items. It is optional exposition. And while he's talking to you, he has his partner, T-Bot, communicating to both Eli and the player through old movie quotes akin to Fallout 1's master. All of this is happening while classical and jazz music is playing on a radio somewhere in the den. The vibes are immaculate. This is almost perfect. And I hope that they are capable of actually finishing this one day. Because what is already here is some of the best stuff I have ever played from a mod for Half-Life 2. It is the best interpretation of the beta stuff. Because what they're doing here is different from Dark Interval. Dark Interval is attempting to build something entirely original and very much stands up on its own. But what Raising the Bar Redux is doing is taking the original leaked maps blocking them out by themselves, and then building on top of them. So you're playing what feels like original content, and then every once in a while, you appear in an area that beta nerds will recognize, but is stylized and art passed in a way that looks very of the day, modern, great. Of course, there are some aspects of the original tone that are missing. The ever-present green pea soup color 
of all of the City 17 maps that were seen back in the original leak is pretty much gone. And Raising the Bar Redux does suffer from the Black Mesa issue from time to time, which is to say some of the level design is art past so much so that it's difficult to get a read on exactly where the player is supposed to go. Most of the time, they do fine. They put a light over the door you're supposed to go to, or there are open pathways, but sometimes there's so many props and clutter in the environment, it's difficult to get a read on exactly where the forward direction for the player is supposed to be. The only other complaint I have is that this mod does Portal 2 level transitions in an environment where there aren't logical separations between environments. What happens a lot is you'll just be moving through an open city-like environment, wasteland-like environment, the canals, and doors will just automatically close behind you to then load the next map. Or level transitions happen in the weirdest places that absolutely break the flow and immersion of those set pieces. Valve is an expert of finding the perfect place to do a level transition. And I don't know how difficult it would be to shuffle those around, but as it currently stands, some of the level transitions that exist in RTBR are kind of jank and very much pull me out of the game. But to be honest, this is nitpicking. I am absolutely looking for reasons to nitpick because I can't just gush for 20 minutes about a mod. I had the opportunity to talk to the lead developer of this mod and he assures me that based on how the organizational structure of this mod team is set up, along with the fact that the majority of the major players in designing this mod have stuck around for the majority of these six years, leads to the idea that yes, they will be able to finish this one day. I have heard that there will be a demo release of Division 3, which will be four or five maps specifically in the depot, which is the beta version of Nova Prospect. However, Division 3 in its entirety, which I've been told is one of the longest, if not the longest division they're working on, is likely not going to be out until 2025. That's fine. Take your time. It's a mod and all volunteer work. However, trying to then tell me that not only are there going to be seven divisions plus the portal mod, but also you're working on Half-Life 2 RTX does make me a little anxious that this beautiful game may not be getting all of the attention that it needs because it's possible that this mod team is spreading themselves too thin. Of course, that is just me speaking from experience and having interacted with mod teams over the last 15 years. But David, the guy in charge of this team, definitely seems to know what they are doing more so than the majority of people that I've interacted with that claim to lead a mod team. Of course, I only really interacted with David for a short period of time over Discord chat, but the only reason I'm so invested is because this is that good. I really want to see this finished. We will be streaming all of Raising the Bar Redux has to offer, which is Division 1, Division 2, and Salvation as soon as possible. Could even be today. And I'd love to send a huge shout out and a spirit bomb of love over to the Raising the Bar Redux team, because what you're doing is honest to God fulfilling a childhood dream of mine. I cannot speak to just how important seeing something like this actually getting finished is to me. Download links, of course, are down in the description below. The Discord server invite link to the Raising the Bar Redux Discord server is also down below. Thank you so much for listening to me gush about a mod that I really, really enjoyed playing. I can't wait for Division 3, and I can't wait to play the entire thing, end-to-end, end, Division 1 through 7, when my first grandchild is born. I'm Tyler McVicker, the Passionate Gamer. Thank you so much for spending just a little bit of your week with me. And if you want to support this kind of content, get to see some stuff early, check out my Floatplane and Patreon pages down in the description below, or just join my Discord server invite link also down there. I'm very active on there. My Twitter, or excuse me, X page is also down there, but I'm I'm trying to I don't know if I'm going to be using Twitter very much anymore. And once again, huge thanks to War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Check out War Thunder for free down in the description below. Anywho, I'm Tyler McPick with the Passionate Gamer. Thank you so much. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace and hair grease. Adios.